sympathy, but not empathy. Never walk into a home where a child has been taken and say, I know what you're going through. That is the dumbest thing you can say. You don't know that unless you've had a child that was taken. The best thing you can do is wrap your arms around the people that you love and hold them and hug them and say, I love you and I'm here for you. But don't ever say something foolish like I know what you're going through. Ezekiel in the third chapter said, I sat where they sat. What was he talking about? He was talking about a concentration camp of Jewish people in exile in Babylon. They had just become slaves. Babylon had gone into Israel and taken them into captivity. They were now refugees of war. They'd lost their homes. They'd lost their freedom. They'd lost their destiny, their hope. David said they sat down and wept when they remembered Zion, meaning Jerusalem. Ezekiel wanted to communicate with them, so he sat where they sat. God said, if you're going to speak to those people, you go down there where they are, and you stay where they are. Who wants optimism from an armchair quarterback? Who wants glib words of wisdom from a long-haired prophet who has no scars on his back? So Ezekiel became a captive. He went down to live with the Jewish people in captivity. He let the blows of humiliation that they were experiencing become his. He looked at the world through their eyes. He felt what they felt. And it changed his point of view from a point of ministry. The fact husbands and wives can, can communicate with this very principle of seeing it from their point of view. As a boss, sometimes you need to look at something from your employee's point of view. As a counselor, that's a good thing to do. One of the most dramatic marriage counseling sessions I had many years ago when I was still doing this is this Ezekiel message. A husband had little appreciation for his wife who was taking care of three small children without any help in a crowded house. So I said to him, called him by name, I said, why don't you see it from her point of view? Why don't you sit where she sits? Why don't you choose one day, just any day, and stay home all day with three of these small children, and you clean the house. You wash the dishes, mop the floors, you wash and iron the clothes, you change the diapers, you potty train this little guy you got right here. He needs it. Answer the phone. Go get the groceries. And when your wife comes home at 5.30, look as fresh as the daisy. Have a rose in your teeth and have the hot breath of passion in both of your eyes. He looked at me like I was insane. He said, you can't be serious. I said, look, one day, John Wayne, just one day, do it. I lost him. He went and found another counselor. Think about it. I sat where they sat. You don't really know how it is until you see it from their perspective. I think doctors are wonderful people. In the past few years of my life, I've seen more of them than I want to. But I think every doctor should be sick just once and admitted to the hospital where he works under the name of John Doe to escape the Messiah complex. To experience the joy of some female Ironsides, a.k.a. nurse, walking into your room at 4 o'clock in the morning, sticking a 6-inch noodle in your behind, and it ricochets off your hip bone and says, Are you resting well? For 40 years, Hagee Ministries has taken all the gospel to all the world and to every generation. Together with your support, lives have been changed and stories have been rewritten by the power of the Word of God. As a new decade begins, it is time to write a fresh chapter together. To forge a bond that will continue to bring souls into the loving embrace of Jesus Christ. Partner with us today and become a part of blessing those in need and changing the lives of the ones you love for decades to come. You 
help families find reconciliation, bore witness to history in the making, and have seen troubled hearts discover the peace that only Christ can bring. For your support this month, you will receive special resources that will bless your life and bring you closer to the Word of God. Send your gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash love. There's a classic prayer, Oh Lord, help me to never judge another person until I've walked in their shoes for two weeks. Have you ever watched people walk down the street and pass a real beggar with a tin cup. I'm not talking about some millennial dude that's too lazy to work. I'm talking about somebody that really needs help. Watch the people that give. The silk stocking crowd will walk by him. But the blue collar people will help him because they know what it feels to need something and can't get it. It may not be much, but they'll give it to him. One of the dumbest things you can say in the hour of another person feeling is, I know how you feel. You can't possibly, unless you've experienced exactly that. Two, communicate with compassion. Compassion is transmitted through touch. There are 60,000 neurological endings in your hand. Did you know that? Jesus touched people with his hands. Touching is powerful. Touch is the magic wand of intimacy. I want to say that again. Touch is the magic wand of intimacy. One touch is worth a thousand words. In the rat race of life, don't get too busy to touch, to hold, to hug your children, your wife, your husband, the people you love. I do that every day. When I see my kids, so they're 50, I'm still hugging them. Success in marriage is more than finding the right person. Success in marriage is being the right person. You being the right person. One does not find happiness in marriage, but happiness, but they take happiness into marriage. If you're not happy when you get married, believe me, changes are coming. Changes are coming. There are times in every marriage when tears become a language of their own and words are too feeble to convey your feelings. When compassion expressed in silence embraces the best and when all of the beautiful words in the world weigh less than a single act of love. No cord or cable.